So your SRT4 doesn't shift right. Neither does mine. Let's figure it out. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona, and welcome to another video. Now, I'm no SRT4 connoisseur, but I have test driven a couple uh, and, of course, bought this one. Um, one of the ones I test drove had this exact same issue. I didn't know what it was at the time, and it's what caused me not to buy the car. But the aftermarket is littered with parts for it. So if you're looking at an SRT4, you might not want to write it off if it is having shifting issues. The most common thing is going to be the clutch pedal pivot. So I've got the Daryl Cox Racing pivot. We're going to start with that and see if that fixes it. I've got a bushing kit. And then since you can tell a lot about a man by the shift knob, he rocks. I got a new shift knob as well because this plastic one from Dodge is not cutting it. Now here's what's happening with my shifter. Basically, if the car is running, I can't get it to go into gear. When the car is not running, of course, I can get it to go into gear, but like it's kind of annoying, especially in parking lots if I need to use first and reverse. Uh, I have to shut the car off to get into first, and then to get into reverse, I have to shut the car off again. Now, once the car is rolling, I can work it into the gears, no problem, and it does shift pretty smooth with the car off. So. I'm hoping that's an indicator that it is just the clutch pedal pivot. Another thing too, once I start the car in gear, uh, if I take my foot off the brake, the clutch does want to creep forward in first and back in reverse, which again, kind of leads me to believe that that clutch pivot isn't pushing far enough in on the master cylinder to disengage the clutch. So hopefully that's what this adjustable one from DCR fixes today. Most of you already know this, I'm sure, but manual transmissions can be shifted without the clutch. Obviously, I still do use the clutch. Here's a good example of kind of what's going on. I mean, coming up to the red light here, I'll put the clutch in, I'll bring it down, try and get into second. So like right now, it won't go into second, but it will slip in. There it goes, slips in at about 10 miles an hour and then about five, I can slip it into first. If I don't hit it at those exact points, I gotta shut the car off and get it into gear before the light goes. But but that's just an example of something you might have to deal with if you get an SRT4 like this. Okay, I'm in a procrastinating mood today, so I'm gonna save the hard stuff for last. I'm gonna do the pivot last. There is a shifter cable adjustment that I wanna do within the car, so we'll need to remove the center console and everything. It's pretty easy, but I'm gonna start there. Uh, we'll do that, we'll put the shift knob on, and then we'll tackle the pivot. But to get the shift knob off, I think it's just second gear and, oh, well, got her. I think this pops out. One second. I don't know if this is right, but I just pushed on the side and then popped out back and front and that came off. Console's super easy to pull out. Four screws back here, two up here in the cup holders. Just make sure your e-brake is super high. You'll slip it up from the back and out. Mad Dog STS Rod Brake Equipped. I don't know what that is. Apparently the Mad Dog STS Rod Brake is some kind of thing that makes the shifter like really click in. I mean, this thing is like a bolt action rifle. It's a tight little gearbox for sure. So that's cool, didn't know it had that. So the reason I pop this open is to check the, I think it's called crossover adjustment here. Um, I'll put in a clip from this Ed Peters Tech Talk that I've referenced before in one of my other SRT4 videos. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'll do that off camera, you guys can watch that and then we'll come back and it'll be done. This is how you adjust it. Simple as hell. You loosen up that bolt with your fingers. You got the gear shift ball up here. And what you're going to do is you're going to move this lever door to door, ever so slightly. Not fore and aft. You're going to move it door to door. <coughs> just ever so slightly. Just barely, barely move it. And what you're going to find, oh my goodness, look at the change of where it was sitting. Now what you've done, if you just sequenced the crossover, you all know how to do it. That's the number two failure. So mine's adjusted now. It didn't really move. It's an eight millimeter bolt on there. So just good to know it's right. And I guess now we know about this mad dog thing too. I'm going to leave the center console off for the time being, but uh, just for fun, I'll test fit. This is the Daryl Cox racing shift knob. It did come with a sticker that I pulled off, but it's just a weighted shifter. It's metal. The stock one, let's see. The stock one is just plastic and kind of painted. So it looks kind of cheap. Um, and then I suppose since you just pull up to get it off, if you were really ripping through the gears, it could come off. This one has um, set screws in it, two set screws that kind of go in this little wedge here up front. So should be a better shifter all in all. 
So oddly enough, the set screws are different sizes, but holy smokes, that's a game changer. If we can get this thing shifting right, it's gonna be a blast. All right, now we need to tackle this pivot. Whoa! Now there's a really good step-by-step -step video on this done by another channel. Uh, I think you guys should definitely watch that one if you have to do this. I'll link it in the description below. I'll probably just time-lapse you guys on this, and if anything bad happens or goes wrong, I'll just fill you in as I go. This is not gonna be much fun, so underneath the clutch pedal, up, Oh man, I don't even know if you can see it. By the way, if any of you know what any of this wiring is, let me know. Looks like I got a little fuse here. Bunch more stuff up there. Okay, there it is. In the center of the screen, let me get the screen wire out of the way. Center of the screen, that is the back of the pivot that attaches to the pedal. And then I think there's a clip that goes into the master cylinder there. This isn't even worth taping. Honestly, this is gonna be hard. I think if I get this, you guys all have to hand me a man card. Okay, quick update for you guys. I've got the snap ring and the dust boot off. So far, the snap ring has been murder. Something that might help you, uh, the clutch pedal is obviously disconnected. I did depress that to get in there. There is a connector right here. Hold on. This connector right here, I disconnected for the time being. This is the snap ring player that I used. Uh, I got it off Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description. This is the head you wanna use, this one with the little bend on it. A long, long time later, I finally got the stock uh, arm out. So the secret on this, guys, you're gonna want the thinnest blade screwdriver you can find. Have this pretty much flush with where the piston comes out. Sorry, I know it's blurry. And then just wedge it kind of between and slowly work it out. I mean, you'll see other videos on it. It's not easy, like you're gonna struggle with it a little bit, but persistence will pay off. This thing, I got it out with this, but I would have loved to have something flatter. It would have gone a lot quicker. Now this isn't in the instructions, but I need the old uh, snap ring and dust boot and stuff, and I can't get this piece off. It like locks into the rod up here. So I'm just gonna cut the old rod. Actually, before I cut it, I thought it'd be good to kind of match up the lengths. This one is going to have to be a little bit longer, I think. That's probably where some of our issues came from, but kind of cool to see the stock compared to the DCR. Um, obviously this kind of looks like a piece of junk. Be super careful putting your snap ring back in. I was lucky enough to drop mine and have it go underneath the carpet, so I did have to pull these panels and peel this back to find it, so just FYI. Also, use a better snap ring players than mine. I just spent the last 20 minutes finding this thing that flew away. I don't know if you can see it, but how I got that snap ring back in there, I will never know. The E-clip that comes with the DCR push rod is a, uh, I think it was a nine millimeter, so I bought a kit, uh, the same kit that was recommended in the video. I'll link it in my description as well. One more hot tip for you on this tool. I put a little bit of black electrical tape in there to hold the E-clip in when I was putting it up in there. Uh, without that, it would fall and of course, go into the carpet, on the floor, hard to find. Well, it took a little bit of time, but she's all in and ready for a test. Let's see what happens. All right, now theoretically, it's in neutral right now. Theoretically, I should be able to start it and put it in gear, I would think, if it's working, because I wasn't able to put it in gear with it running before. Oh, reverse. First, it might have fixed it. Reverse, let's find out. I can't roll the window down because I tinted it. It's working. Okay, I gotta get my door shut now. A one finger into fourth. All day. everything put back together super impressed with everything uh, the shift knob is sick I, I can't remember the exact price I'll annotate it down here but worth every penny if you have an SRT4 absolutely you have to throw away the plastic uh, piece of garbage stock knob get yourself a Daryl Cox racing knob and then the pivot I can't remember what I paid for that either it was pretty cheap annotated price right down here 
but obviously totally worth it. Uh, when I bought this, I was kind of assuming I was gonna have to pull the transmission, and it doesn't look like I'm going to have to now. I'm gonna stick with a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality, so I'm gonna keep the uh, DCR bushing set for later. Um, I think it's fine. I, I don't, this thing feels amazing, so I don't see any reason to mess with it. I think that'll do it for today's video, guys. I hope you learned something. If you're an SRT4 owner or you're looking at them and you're running into some you know, clutch or transmission issues, it's probably fixable. Don't tell anyone else. Super happy with the DCR stuff, Daryl Cox Racing stuff I put on. Definitely would recommend it, uh, but I think that'll do it. So I appreciate you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Listen.